Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we are joined by Lisa Gibellario of the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network and coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So great to see you, Lisa. Thank you, Mike. Great to see you, too. Today's topic is somewhat concerning. We've had a number of racial incidents in our schools this spring. And for the sake of disclosure, I am on the school committee, although we are not talking about my views today. So Lisa, how can parents process what, what's happened with some of these incidents? So first of all, it is a good idea to do the, just that, Mike, to process. And what the processing will look like will depend on several factors. So first of all, of course, the age of your children. If you have elementary school children you know, versus high school children or in the middle, um, you want what you talk about and the language you use to be developmentally appropriate. So that is going to influence how you have that conversation. Um, and then, you know, how upset is your child? Is your child really very concerned and disturbed and upset by what they have, you know, seen or heard? Um, that will depend on, on the approach that you take. Um, and then, of course, how impacted was your family? If, if what was overheard or seen was, for example, a, an Asian slur and you are of Asian descent, that conversation is going to be different than if you are you know, a white family. So those are some of the factors. But again, I would say at the minimum, have some conversations around what has been reported. You know, stay calm. And if you are upset, which many of us have been, just own it, just, you know, name your emotion and that's perfectly fine to do with kids. In fact, it models for them how they can identify their own feelings. So, um, you know, name your emotion and then ask questions, ask, you know, how did hearing about this make you feel and then validate what they say. Um, ask them for the little ones. Do you, do you know what blank means? Um, and try to get a sense of, you know, their understanding of the impact of, of this um, statement and why the language is not okay and how it could be hurtful to others. Um, if you bring up terms like racism or prejudice or um, stereotypes, bias, you want to just make sure you're clear on the distinctions um, on what those terms mean. And, and again, this is ongoing this conversations, these are important to have with our kids. So it's not a one-off. So if it doesn't go perfectly smoothly the first time, hopefully you'll be revisiting these topics because they are important. All right, Lisa. Um, tell us how parents should respond if our kids come to us saying that they've overheard their peers t telling racist jokes or making racist comments. Yeah, so I guess I would say first and foremost, again, to stay calm, be calm, um, and, and ask some questions. You know, did anyone else hear this? Um, you know, did anyone else do anything about it? You want to get a sense of if this um, was intervened upon it or interrupted. As with bullying, you know how we talk about bystander? Well, there's also bystander strategies for racial remarks. Um, so it, would, it might be good to Google that, to research what are some strategies that our, our children can do in, in the face of overhearing um, something derogatory and hurtful. Um, however, for, for younger kids or more sensitive kids, um, the safest thing to do might be to walk away and get help from an adult, um, from a trusted teacher or teacher's aide, um, if it happens at school or another adult on the playground. Um, and again, talk about, you know, what impact do you think this has on, on the kids that are on the receiving end of the slur? Um, why is it, you know, hurtful? And again, if it happened at school, I would ask your child, did they report it to a teacher? Um, and if not, hey, let's, you know, maybe that's something we can do together and maybe they can help you write an email. Um, but I would say if it happens on, on school grounds, it should be reported. Um, the, you know, principals want to know about this so they can continue the education to, to the students talking about the impact and why it's not okay. Well, let me ask you this, Lisa. What, what if we, we actually hear a report or, or, or receive news that our own child has uh, been involved in a texting incident or using racial slurs? Um, what, how, should, how should parents respond to that? 
Ah, uh, great question, Mike. So I guess, again, first and foremost, to be calm, um, you're going to step into your role as parent, of course, um, but to be really upset and kind of yelling is just going to shame your child and no learning, no growth will come if a kid is in a place of, of shame. So, however, though, perfectly okay to state your feelings. You know, when I heard that you said blank or when I saw the text, I felt really upset. I felt angry or I felt sad but frame it in a way that's not super judgmental because again, we want our children to grow from this. Um, if it's younger kids, Mike, they, the advice from experts is to find out if they even know what it means, what the slur um, or the derogatory statement even means. Ask them point blank, be very direct. Why did you say or text this? You know, what was going on for you? A lot of times a kid will say, you know, oh, I was just joking around. It, you know, I, I didn't mean to be hurtful. It was just a joke. But then let them know that the impact, regardless of the intent, is that it could have been and probably was hurtful. Um, so even if the intent is not malicious, they need to know that it has an impact. Um, acknowledge that mistakes are part of growth, you know, part of growing up. We all make mistakes and we have to take responsibility for our mistake. So if they did indeed um, direct this comment at someone or if somebody was hurt by it, by overhearing it or reading it, they need to take responsibility and apologize. Um, and they may need your guidance in doing that. Um, and you can role model with them, but they will, I would advise that they take responsibility, own it and apologize to anybody that was impacted by this. Um, anything else to add, Lisa? Well, I guess I would just say that, you know, this is concerning, um, you know, this kind of behavior, but it does provide parents with an opportunity to talk about racism, to talk about bias, to talk about privilege. Um, these are topics that some of us mean to explore with our kids, and we don't always do it. So um, take these unfortunate incidences and use them as an opportunity to engage in conversations with your kids. And as I said earlier, not one time conversations, but ongoing conversations. These are important issues. And the way we reflect that importance is by giving them some attention in our family. Um, and then ask your kids, you know, what are you hearing at school? What was the response of your friends? Um, what did you think of how the school handled it? What did you think of how, um, the adults handled it. What are you seeing on social media, in books, on the shows that you're watching? Use all of those as opportunities to explore these topics and, and to kind of, again, drive home that words can be hurtful. They have an impact. We need to be responsible for our language. We need to be respectful of different cultures. So again, these unfortunate incidences do provide an, an opportunity for families to talk about racism and the impact of language. All right, thank you, Lisa. I know many parents and our kids have been uncomfortable with some of the recent racial incidents, and it's so important to know how to respond. This is Belmont Journal News Now. We've been talking with Lisa Gibellario about uh, recent racial incidents and how parents should respond involving their kids. I'm Mike Crowley, and we'll see you next time.